hello guys welcome back to another Android studio tutorial in today's episode we are going to learn about another core concepts in Android called async task if your application contains some network operations you must implement async task otherwise it will cause some serious issues for example if your application needs to download some file from the internet and if you place the downloading process inside the UI thread and if the downloading process will take more than 5 seconds, the system will issue an application not responding error. And that will affect the user experience of your application. If you implement async task, you can solve all these issues. That means the async task contain a background thread so that you can place the downloading process within the async task background thread. Okay, so before going to create an Android application based on async task, you must have some basic idea about async task. You must need to know about what you mean by async task and what are the methods available in async task and how the async task executes. That's why I create this presentation. So in the very next episode, we create an Android application that will demonstrate async task. So here in this presentation, I am going to show you what are the methods available in async task and how an async task executes. So here is an introduction to async task. An asynchronous task or simply called async task is defined by a computation that runs on the background thread and whose result is published on the UI thread. For example, in the case of downloading a file, you can display the downloading process using a progress bar. Async does enable proper and easy use of the UI thread. Async does should ideally used for short operation, for example a few seconds at the most. Now you need to know what are the basic steps within async task. There are four basic steps are available in async task. For using async task, you must create, create a class that extends async task. Async task must be subclass to be used and you must implement at least one method. You must implement the doing background method within that class. And here is the first method within async task on pre-execute. For executing an async task, you have to create an object of the class that extends async task and by use that object, you have to call the execute method. So if you call the execute method, the Android system will call the on pre-execute method. This method invoked on the UI thread before the task is executed. This is the first method invoked by the Android system if you start an async task. This step is normally used to set up the task, for instance by showing a progress bar in the user interface. So within this method, you can make the initial preparation for the async task. For example, you can make a progress bar visible in this method. And here is the second method, do in background method. This method invoked on the background thread immediately after the on pre-execute finishes its execution. This is the only method run in the background thread. All other methods are executed within the UI thread. So after finishing the on pre-execute method, the Android system will call the do in background method and you can place the background task within this method. This method is used to perform background computation that can take a long time. For example, download a file from the internet. You can place the code for download a file from the internet within this method. The result of the computation must be returned by this step and will be passed back to the last step called on post execute. After finishing the job within this method, the Android system will return the result back into another method within async task called on post execute method. And from that method, you can publish the result on the UI thread. From this method, you can also call the publish progress method to publish the progress on the UI thread. 
For example, in the case of downloading a file from the internet, if you want to publish the downloading progress in the form of a progress bar, you have to call the publish progress method to update the progress bar. And whenever you call the publish progress method, Android system will call another method within async task called on progress update method. And from this method, you can publish the result on the UI thread. And here is the third method within async task called on progress update. This method invoked on the main thread when there is a call to publish progress from the do do in background method. So whenever you call the publish progress method from the do in background method, and both system will call the on progress update method. And from this method, you can publish the result into the UI thread. This method is used to display any form of progress in the user interface while the background computation is still executing in the doing background pro doing background method. For example, you can display the downloading progress using a progress bar while the download is still running within the doing background method. And here is the last method inside async task called on post execute method. This method invoked on the UI thread after the background computation finishes. So after finishing the job within the doing background method, and the system will call this method on post execute and return the result back into the into this method. The result of the background computation is passed to this step as a parameter from doing background method. And here, here is the generic types used by the async task. Async task used three generic types, params, progress, and result. First one is params. The type of the parameters sent to the task upon execution. For example, if you want to download some image from the internet, you have to pass the URL of the images in the form of param into the doing background method. The second generic type is progress. This is the type of the progress unit published during the background computation. For example, if you want to publish the progress in the form of integer, you have to specify progress as int. And if you want to publish the progress in the form of double, you have to specify the type of progress as double. And the last one is result. This will represent the type of the result of the background computation. If you want to publish the result in the form of integer, you have to specify the type of result as int. And if you want to publish the result in the form of long, you have to specify the type of the result as long. Here is a simple example that demonstrates the generic type of async task. Here is a class called the download file task that extends async task. And here is the gener generic type used by the async task. Here the first one is params, it is URL. And here is the second one is the second argument which is progress. And here the type of the progress is integer. And here is the last parameter that is the result. And here the type is long. You must follow some threading rules while using async task. The first rule is the async task class must be loaded on the UI thread. The task instance must be created on the UI thread. The method execute must be executed within the UI thread. Do not call any of the async task methods manually. The task can be executed only once. An exception will be thrown if a second execution is attempted. These are the basic rules, threading rules while working with async task. Now here I create a simple animation that will demonstrate how the async task execute if you start an, start an async task. Here this animation will demonstrate how the async task will execute. So here we have a main UI thread. Here we have the async task. And here we have a background thread. So for starting an async task, you have to create an object of a class that extends async task. And by using that object, you have to call the execute method. So here I create an object of the class that extends async task. And by using that object, I call the execute method. 
So whenever you call the execute method, Android system will call the on pre-execute method inside async task. So now Android system will call the on pre-execute method inside async task. Now Android system will place the on pre-execute method inside the UI thread and execute it inside UI thread. Now Android system execute the on pre-execute method on the UI thread. And after finishing the execution of on pre-execute method, Android system will call the doing background method inside async task. Now finishes execution of on pre-execute method and invoke the doing background method inside async task. And the Android system will place the doing background method inside the background thread, not on the UI thread. This is the only method that execute inside the background thread. Now execute the doing background method inside the background thread. And if you call the publish progress method inside doing background method, Android system will call the on progress update method inside async task. So if you call the publish progress method, it will invoke on progress update method inside async task. And the system will place the on progress update method inside the UI thread and execute it. Now Android system will place the on progress update method inside the UI thread and execute. So that you can publish the progress on the UI thread. And finally, after finishing the background job within the doing background method, the system will return the result back into the on post execute method available in async task. Now finish the execution of doing background method and invoke the on post execute method inside async task and place the on post execute method into the UI thread and execute it. Now place the on post execute method inside UI thread and execute so that you can publish the result on the user interface. I hope you get the basic knowledge of what you mean by async task and what are the methods inside async task and how the async task executes. Thank you for watching. In the very next episode, we are going to create an Android application that will demonstrate an async task. See you in the next episode.